Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Krizia Ann and I am a current West Coast University nursing student and I'm currently in my critical care. So before I start this video, I just want to talk about what this video is about. I know I haven't posted in a long time, but that's because I've been so busy and like just a lot of things have been going on. Um, but I wanted to make a video about my first week of critical care, but I never got to editing it and it is honestly eight, been eight weeks later and I still haven't edited. So I wanted to kind of give a comparison of like, see, you, I mean, I wanted you guys to see how I was during the first week and then eight weeks later to talk about exactly what happened, what my thoughts are, how to prepare and like things I wish I knew before I started critical care. Okay, so if you guys haven't um, subscribed yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button. You guys can also follow me on my Instagram at and underscore underscore. Um, if you guys need any help, definitely reach out to me there. DM me. I know a lot of you guys have been reaching out to me there just to ask me personal questions um, and just to have a talk with me. So go ahead and reach out. You know, I don't bite. Um, I try to help you as much as I can, even though like... There's videos you can watch. I know there's some certain personal things that you guys want to ask me, so go ahead and ask me. Um, so yeah, let's get started with my video. Good morning, guys. It is August 24th, and it's 6.56 a.m. It's Monday, and it's the first day of critical care week. And today I have clinicals. So I have to clock in. I'm going to be using our, what is it called? Mobile app. And then the professors give us a code to clock in at our time that we're supposed to be in class. So we just finished our like pre-conference so everything is still online we're using like zoom or blackboard um and we just went over the expectations and like what clinical is basically gonna be consisting of so for this term since everything is still online um for advanced medical med surge advanced medical surgical nursing everything's still online so the first half is going to be telehealth no, first half is going to be Swift River and the second half is going to be telehealth. And so the clinicals is from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And from the pre-conference to 11 o'clock, that's the Swift River. If you guys want to know how like Swift River looks like, it looks like this. So it has the current assignments for the very first week. So it'll be divided. So here like it'll show this one has you need to get a score of 50, 0 out of 50. Um most likely you have to get like a 50 and above and then you have to finish this or have a time requirement of half an hour and like this one it's like a math refresher you get a score of zero over 90 or above a 90 to get it so every time it says zero out of whatever you have to get above that required score so that's how it looks like um let's just go through one so this one's like math mid math questions so we're just gonna be doing all right guys, so I just had lunch. I had to clock out at 11 and then clock back in at 11.30. I did already complete the modules that they wanted us to do. Um, I have my Dunkin', I have my iced caramel macchiato. So right now we're actually just waiting on, sorry, Louis like playing with a little Let me just move over here. Louis, um, Louis. <laughs> Um, I, I finished my I finished my modules like the models that we had to do and um, God I'm repeating myself finished the modules already now I'm just waiting for my professor to let us know when we're gonna be doing our telehealth and so telehealth is a little bit different than what we've been doing so this time around telehealth like we are gonna go on a call oh no Louie we're gonna go on a call with a patient and then we're gonna basically interview them, ask them questions. I, I mentioned it earlier, so I don't think I'm gonna be allowed to film it because um, HIPAA violations. 
so that's gonna be for today i don't know what else we have planned for the rest of the day so that is what we will be doing Ooh, that's my alarm i don't know what it's for but i hope you guys have been finding this very interesting and not boring this is like everything at home clinicals um after i finish my modules we have something to do a nursing process so normally when you're in clinicals you always have to do this assignment and you basically pick out a patient and you do a nursing process on them so the nursing process let me show you guys how it looks like the nursing process paper looks like this it's a worksheet um and it has you fill out all of this information so you want to do an assessment on your patient what's the objective findings subjective findings and then with your assessment, you're gonna develop a nursing diagnosis, um, two nursing diagnoses, diagnoses, I don't know how to say it correctly. And then once you do that, you're gonna do your patient goals, and then you're just gonna fill out this small portion in the back. And the purpose of this is to focus on practicing an assessment on your patients and then developing a plan for them and what you can do for them. And then you usually you would present this at the end of clinicals at your post conference where you would do an S bar um, in front of your classmates so that they can listen to the patient you had and your plans for that patient and then you end up submitting this assignment. Um, what else do you do in clinicals? And then usually your professor in clinicals would go around um, and basically talk to you and ask you, you know how you're doing and then ask you about your patients, what kind of patients you have for that day. And so it's a very interesting worksheet um definitely helps me with my critical thinking skills and you know what to do for my patients and this was something that i would have really loved to do during critical care like on the floor but um definitely put in the work because the information that we get isn't going to be a real actual live patient we're gonna be using the patients we find our patients we treat on our virtual clinical scenarios which is using uh swift river so that's what patients we will be using for this nursing process worksheet so it is 2:02 p.m and i just finished my um zoom call so we're not having telehealth today uh, for some reason i guess that wasn't set up for today but we went over things that we have to do so for your critical care or advanced medical surgical nursing term um you're gonna have to do skills validation on four things so we're gonna be doing a validation on blood administration central venous access um chest tube drainage and uh, a physical assessment so those four things that we're gonna have to do that's gonna be due on your week two and then i am working on my nursing process worksheet and i'm gonna be filling out this um brain sheet report because at 5 a.m. today, I'm going to be having another post-conference meeting where we will be giving our SBAR reports of our patients and talking about our nursing process. Okay, so I completed my nursing process worksheet. You guys are going to listen to me when I read off my SBAR during clinicals on Zoom. So now we're meeting on Zoom. So my patient was KH, who is a 42-year-old Caucasian male who suffered a gunshot wound to the right chest. He was an off-duty police officer um, and he was trying to stop an armed robbery when he got shot. He was admitted for a traumatic pneumothorax and had a right thoracotomy where they removed a part of his right middle lobe. He has no medical history. He is full code. Upon assessment, his vital signs are currently stable, but he did complain of pain of 8 out of 10. We gave him medication and when we reassessed it, he reported minimal pain of 2 out of 10. His most recent chest x-ray showed that his right lungs are fully expanded. He's currently on a three-chamber water seal pleural vac and it's running at a low continuous suction and the plan is to have the chest tube removed tomorrow. He has an IV 18 gauge uh, NGO calf of the left arm that is supposed to be changed today and he has and it's running at D5W at 125 milliliters an hour. So the current recommendation is to continue him on the pain management, uh, keep him on the routine schedule and monitor the incision sites and chest tube drainage. So that is basically how you guys would do an S bar. You would really have to get comfortable with speaking in front of your clinical classmates and just to not be afraid um, because it is a learning experience. Just be aware of that. You're going to start doing that in your fundamentals, learning how to do S bar. 
and you can even you know start looking it up yourself if you want to prepare yourself you want to go in confident knowing what you're doing so there's a lot of videos online that you guys can watch on what s bar is how do you basically um go over it but s bar is basically the type of communication that we do when we're changing shift report when you're transferring patients when um yeah you're basically just giving a report to another nurse of what's going on and the most important thing is letting you don't have to tell them every single thing if there's things in the chart they can find they can find um but there are certain things as a nurse that you would want to know so it's also important to ask the nurse questions because sometimes we have our own type of information that we would like to include so also make sure that you guys are listening and also asking any questions that you would like that you may not find on the chart so that is the end of my clinical day first day of clinicals unfortunately today we didn't have telehealth which we normally would have um overall i really liked it i did learn a lot about like chest tube drainages things like that and advanced clinical med surge is basically just learning a lot more critically thinking and like learning labs and how you can tie it all together it's just going to go based off of your message one message two so definitely have a very good foundation for message one and message two so you can do really well in this class um tomorrow is tuesday i don't have anything and then wednesday i have class at 7 a.m and then this friday i have a simulations um from two to seven so for critical care you're going to be having three simulations it's all going to be online for me um but normally you would have it in school so when you guys see that video of like the two two well, the one mirror room kind of thing where there's a dummy um there's like a real life dummy not a real life well a very good animatronic dummy where you get to practice on and your classmates watch you through a room very interesting you walk in and you basically act like you're the nurse and you're treating it as if it was a real life situation and they have vital signs going on your simulation instructor is like talking through the through the um the speakers and then they're acting like they're the patient um the the you can hear the heartbeat it's breathing you can feel if the areas are hot um so there's a lot of things that happen with those like animatronics and you'll for critical care you'll be doing that three times um each one is five hours long so each term you would expect to have a simulation it's usually one time um, but towards the end like ob or peds you would have two like the first one is just going to be going over the basics like information you should know then the second one is like going over more information and you basically run a simulation where they give you a scenario of a patient and then you do your assessments like what would you do if the heart rate starts going down or do you have to end up doing cpr compression like those kinds of things they put you in those kinds of scenarios which is really fun and exciting at first it's very intimidating but at the end like everything's just you've just been doing it so much that it just gets a little bit more comfortable so i hope you guys enjoyed the first day clinicals then i will see you guys on tomorrow if i decide to vlog or see you guys on wednesday when i have my lecture good morning guys it is wednesday august 26th 9 18 a.m i'm currently on a small little break from class so i have lecture today from 7 a.m to 12 p.m um there's a lot of things <laughs> like i haven't taken a 7 a.m class in, in such a long time like a, a theory class or all of my theory classes have been later on in the day but so far we've gone over our syllabus talked about our expectations went over our introductions um and i feel like i'm really gonna like this class overall i'm actually super excited for this term it's already pretty they have a lot of expectations like they said that they're not gonna tell us when they're gonna be posting our questions so we constantly have to check um you know our attendance to see if they posted a question we have a couple of group presentations during this term we have to present on a certain topic um but everything is still the same same quizzes um, amount of quizzes um but the difference between this time around is we start to work on pharmacology stuff again because right before we still haven't taken our pharmacology doctor that's not going to be taken until um our very last term okay so fast forward to eight weeks later um i just had my proctor today i got a level two and i was one question away from getting a level three one question but it's okay you know i i still got an a and i mean i still got an a in the proctor so we're all good i'm still passing that's all that matters louie what's up what's up what's up
I the first week wasn't bad it's always the first week that's not bad it's a transition from week one to week two when you start to study for your exams is where it gets difficult um but something that I want you guys to know is that a lot of people think that critical care is hard the concepts are not hard like it's the heavy content that makes it hard it's the organization it's a time management that makes it hard um so if you focus like i'm telling you right now focus and do really well and give all your time in med surge one and in med surge two the reason why i'm telling you that is because when you take med surge again it's literally the same concepts but it just in a different type of situation so from what i remember med surge one is just learning about diseases or the general diseases like gastritis, like GI disorders, um, neuro disorders, cardio disorders. And then when you move into med surge 2, you start to focus more on the chronic diseases. And then when you move, sorry, Louis is like being crazy. Then when you move on to advanced critical care, then that's when you're going to be focusing on emergency situations. Critical care patients who are in acute settings that are literally like about to die. And so the concepts themselves are very, very similar. And the way you approach the questions are very similar as well. It's just, again, a lot of heavy content, a lot of information to know. Um, and knowing how to time manage your time well. So initially, like when you're going to be going over all of this information, it's going to seem like it's a lot. But once you read the book and once you get through it once, it's like, okay, it's not that bad. It's easy. It's just a lot of information um, to review and new information. So when you get into critical care, don't be intimidated by it. Don't feel like it's going to be the hardest term ever. It's not as long as if you were doing great in mid surge one and mid surge two. Like if you're able to do well, then if you know how to answer questions, if you know how to prioritize, if you know your ABCs, um, then you will do fine in critical care. You just have to make sure that you review everything and you understand the material. Um, so that's what people have a conception of when it comes to critical care now moving on so when it comes to message one message two you don't have your oh my gosh louie you don't have your um proctored until you're into advanced med surge so like once you take your proctor for advanced message everything is kind of combined so it's just like not really critical critical care questions but a lot of everything combined together so it's not that difficult again just a lot of information now the other thing too that has changed is that in like ever since covid happened i'm i've honestly been having a hard time with studying on my own because i'm home all the time and all i want to do is watch tv stay on my phone and go to sleep and that's what's been happening but this time around i decided to form a small a study group with one of my friends and i've known him since funds and we ended up in the same class you know until critical care and we decided to be accountable for each other so we set up times like every day we'd be like when do you want to study what time can you do and we set up a time and that made me more motivated to study and we were able to push each other because i didn't want to make i didn't want to tell my classmate like oh i don't want to study today because it'll be like no having someone like being like having someone with you and accountable is what's going to help you get through it if you're currently you know doing all online classes same thing when it comes to just if you were to study on class like i never study with someone just because I just like studying on my own but the fact that like being at home so much just honestly it was so hard to study by myself and so we would we would study we would do a google hangout and then we would literally read the book together and we would go through the powerpoints together we'd ask each other questions we'd look up concepts that we didn't understand and that's what helped both of us get through it like we both did fine we were passing all of our quizzes we average at least a b in all of our exams and if it wasn't for that i honestly feel like i would have had such a harder time studying for this class so when they say to form a study group from the like form a study group from the beginning like find someone that you work well with 
and you study well with um, because you want this to last for a long time and the reason why it was so hard for me to try to form a study group is because sometimes I may not click with people well or I just like don't like the way they study um, but I was able to find someone that we were able to find a method that worked for both of us to study and it helped a lot it honestly helped so much and so i feel like that's what helped me get through critical care is because i had someone with me to study with in addition to that a couple of other updates um so my clinical site this term was on telehealth and so we'd spend our first couple hours from 7 to 11 doing telehealth and then in the afternoon doing our telehealth call with a patient and um what kind of fucked us up was that our school school our school like on the day of my clinicals i don't even know if i'm for sure like 100 percent gonna have a telehealth patient in the afternoon the school is supposed to call out and reach out to patients that are willing to talk to us that day there were a couple of times throughout the term where we weren't able to talk to a patient because they didn't have one for us available and so we ended up doing case studies or whatever and then it comes to week seven week eight they tell us like oh we missed three telehealth calls so we have to remake up three days of clinicals which is so so frustrating and i've never had issues like this with the school and it was frustrating because it was the school's responsibility to make sure we had louis it was our school's responsibility to make sure that we had patients to talk to that day of and when they didn't they have to say okay well now you have to schedule another day to do this telehealth call and the fact that it was in between week set like we literally found out last week we were frustrated because we said hey we have proctored we have finals like we have simulations like when are we even gonna have time to be able to like spend time to do telehealth calls and so we try to figure it out with the school like can we do two calls in one day you know and Finally, the school is able to work with us because I guess they realize that, you know, a part of it was their fault. And they're going to make us take out extra time throughout the week and away from our studies to be able to reach the requirements of our patient direct care hours. And so we were able to figure that out. It was frustrating, but I've never had to deal with something like that with West Coast C. That was the only issue I've ever had to have, like, where they kind of, like, screwed me over a little bit. But in the end, it wasn't even that bad because it all worked out. It's all working out. Um, and a biggest, the biggest, one of the biggest updates was I started my own business. I started my own online business. Um, it's called Fit Nonstop. I know some of you guys are following, following me on there already, but I created a little fitness small business where we create, where, uh, I can't even talk, where we create long resistance bands, um, which is a workout accessory that you can use at home and anywhere and because of covid i know a lot of the gyms have been closed and so we decided to make workout accessories that are available and affordable that you can use anywhere to make sure that you stay healthy and active throughout this pandemic if you guys want to check it out you guys can check out the instagram fit nonstop um we have about six long bands and three short band or booty bands as you would say available um right now that you guys can buy so if you guys want to support me you guys can go and check it out and see all of the products that we have again the instagram is at fit period nonstop. um and the reason why i'm mentioning this was because I ended up leaving my job as a patient care assistant and it was a very hard decision for me to make because I knew that this job is very beneficial for me as a nursing student because I learned so much especially during the pandemic right now and the fact that I'm not able to get clinicals, um, clinical experience as a nursing student because a lot of the hospitals right now aren't letting us in uh, the hospitals are still not letting us in the clinical sites 
and the only ones that they're allowing are integrations first because they're about to graduate and they have like seniority priority kind of thing um, and I feel bad for the other students right now that have started funds during this pandemic because they still haven't had any clinical experience so that kind of sucks but on the bright side on the bright side a lot of the people that our clinical instructors my friends who are nurses say you know what honestly it doesn't matter um, because where you learn a lot more when you're as an actual nurse by yourself and from what I was reading online is that a lot of the new grad programs are uh, updating their programs knowing that the students have less clinical experience than they would have prior to the pandemic so a lot of the nursing program or not like new grad nursing programs are adapting to that different change and adapting to the different types of new grads that they're going to be receiving. And the reason why I left was because there was just too many things that I had to do and it was as much as I would have wanted to run my small business to um be a full-time nursing student and to also have time for my friends and family and to also have time to work um it was just hard for me and every time i would go to like the night before work or the day of work like i would just have this feeling of like i really don't want to go i would rather you know like work on my business and work on studying and work on so many things um other and work on school other than like going to work and i had to think about my priorities and had to think about what was going to make me happy at the time and as much as like i know people are kind of looking for jobs right now i decided to leave but one of the reasons was because i was able i'm like with my business right now i'm making more than i would working per diem as a patient care assistant and when i sent in my two week notice all i literally got was thank you good luck like nothing else and it just made me realize you know like working in a hospital there's a lot of people applying you you are replaceable so what mattered to me the most at this time was to focus on what i want to do now focus on school focus on my small business that I have um, and kind of work on what's important for me right now. I have the rest of my life to work as a nurse, you know, and be able to do a lot more things when it comes to my career in nursing. Uh, but right now at this moment, you know, what was important to me was my business and my school. <sighs> so that's what happened. Um, if I didn't start my small business, I would have been working for um, the job that I have. And so that's an update. And I know a lot of people have been asking me, like, should I work or not? It just depends. You know, if you can work, if all you're doing is working and working and going to school, that's fine. You will definitely have time for your family, for your kids. Um, but for me, like, I just had a lot of things going on at once, and I just decided to leave my job. And so that's what I did. Uh, and I, next week, I have my final. Then the week after that, it is week 10. And then after that, I'm in integrations, and I'm placed at a really, really great hospital for my integrations. Um, I'm still waiting because I, I requested to precept someone at a different hospital. To see if that if they're willing to accept me there, so we're still gonna see. Louis, Louis, Louis making an appearance. Louis making an appearance. Say hi, Louis. Mm. And also because, like, I wanted to be more. I wanted to be around this boy more. Yeah. Um, but having him is like a big responsibility too, and I love being home a lot. Um, and taking care of me baby my baby Louis. but yes so that's been the update um I, I i think some more hospitals are opening up now more centers or um, more places clinical sites are opening uh depending on what term you're in 
so it's looking a lot more better it's a lot more brighter i don't know about the update on whether or not oh whether or not like our school is going to open but i honestly like the online learning <laughs> as much as i don't like it but i just like the fact that i don't have to drive and like get ready for school you know like get dressed i just go to dress like go to class in my pajamas but honestly again if you guys need any help with anything reach out to me on my instagram dm me i'll go ahead and give you a talk i don't care how long your messages are some people would send me like long messages but i appreciate it because i know there's a lot of concerns when it comes to thinking about your career and what you want to do and i'll be here to just give you my my point of view and like what I believe and my experience of starting a private nursing program So again, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching my videos I'm sorry that it's been a while That I posted a video But I'm determined to make more videos now knowing that I'm gonna be starting a new term and just have a little bit more time now since I left my job So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe and and again, DM me if you guys need any help. Thank you for watching.